Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about exploratory data analysis with R. Let's get started. So first off, let's go on and kind of talk about what this new series is actually going to be about. Uh, we're going to talk about how you visualize and transform data to explore uh, your data in a systematic way. And this is, this is what we call an exploratory data analysis or just EDA. Uh, so the EDA is an iterative cycle, okay? We do this over and over and over again on our data. So the first thing we usually like to do is generate questions about our data. Now we're going to answer those questions by visualizing, transforming, and modeling our data. Then we're also going to use what we've learned to refine our questions and or then possibly generate even new questions in the future. Now, an EDA is definitely not a formal process. It is not strict by any set of rules, okay? Uh, you kind of need to go with the flow, okay? It's more of an art form than of a science sometimes. Uh, so more than anything though, it is an, a state of mind, okay? So during the initial phases of our EDA, we need to kind of feel free to investigate, explore every idea that kind of occurs to us. Uh, now some of these ideas will pan out and some of them are just gonna fizzle out and uh, become dead ends. Uh, that's also where the key is where um, having um, a manager or someone to kind of help you say, oh, you've kind of gone too far, uh, it's time to stop and go in a different direction. So as your exploration kind of continues, okay, you will uh, kind of hone in on uh, a few particular productive eye areas that you're going to want to look at, and you'll eventually write up and communicate with others, okay? That's actually your uh, end result is to be able to communicate what's going on in this data set with others. So it's also important, though, to uh, of any data analysis, okay? It's kind of a, kind of the the just the starting point of every analysis that we do. Even if the questions are kind of handed out to you, okay, and, uh, and just said, this is what you need to investigate, well, you also need to investigate the quality of your data. Uh, you need to clean it. Uh, just, again, uh, is just one also application of EDA, okay? Cleaning our data so that we can actually look at this, having our data tidy and clean. Now, we wanna ask questions on whether the data meets our expectations or not, okay? Uh, to do cleaning, again, we need to kind of deploy all of our tools of an EDA, all right? We need to visualize, transform, and model our data. So the next kind of question uh, that we need to look at, all right, is, again, during what is kind of our goal for this EDA? Again, it's to develop an understanding of our data. Now, the easiest way to do this, okay, is going to be using the questions as a guide uh, for our investigation. Uh, when you ask a question, the question kind of focuses your attention on a specific maybe portion of the data set that you want to look at, uh, and also it kind of helps you uh, decide which graphs or models or transformations you're going to need to make in the future, or, or again, at maybe at that point in time. Now, also, uh, exploratory data analysis, or EDAs, is a fundamentally, it is a creative process, okay? Uh, it is probably the most creative process in all of data science. Um, because again, the key is asking the qu high quality questions, okay, to generate a large quantity of questions, okay? So again, do you want quality? Do you want quantity? These are things you're always going to have to do. Having a quality question can also usually lead to a plethora of other questions and potentially even problems that you have. Um, so now a new question though will also help you expose new aspects of your data and it's gonna increase your chances of making a discovery. And that is also what we want to do. We want to have discovery. We want to drill down into those most interesting parts of our data set, okay? New questions are, again, we have to, we'll have to follow up with those later on. Maybe sometimes you find that new question that you want and you need to set it aside. So there is no hard and fast rule, again, with what questions you should ask about your research or your project, okay? However, there are two types of questions uh, that we really need to uh, use to kind of understand, okay? So some of these are, for example, uh, what is uh, the variation, okay, that's going to occur within my variables? And what type of covariation is going to be between my variables? Now this, these, these are kind of uh, key aspects of what we always need to take into account. So before we kind of move on with the series, we're just gonna talk about a couple variables that we need to define uh, so that we can make sure and uh, really, um, so they're all kind of on the same page, okay? So we're gonna spend, actually, let me go back a little bit. Again, here, 
most of this uh, series, okay, we're actually going to focus strictly on these two questions that we have right here. Uh, so let's go back to these uh, definitions. So first off, a variable, it is the quantity or quality or a property that you can measure, okay? Uh, you can also sometimes talk about this as a feature. Uh, now we also have a value, okay? Now this is the state of a variable which you measure, and again, that value may change from measurement to measurement. We have observation. Now an observation itself is going to be a set of measurements uh, that, for example, uh, made under a similar condition. Now you can think about this as a row, okay? Uh, that would be observations. Um, so again, this an observation again is going to contain several values, each associated with a different variable, okay? And it's sometimes referred to as an option, uh, sometimes we'll call them data points, okay? Uh, sometimes you'll even say uh, maybe even it's a cell. Uh, so now that comes us when we have um, tabular data, okay? So tabular data are tidy uh, as a general rule, okay? We want them to be tidy. So it is a set of values, each associated with a variable and an observation. Okay, you can think about this, uh, for those of you that use Excel, it's an Excel spreadsheet. It's a data frame. Again, it's a table. Uh, so, again, tabular data is tidy if, if, okay, each value is placed in its own cell and each variable in its own column and each observation in its own row. Okay, so again, m most of the time in, uh, in our series we have a nice, complete, tidy data that we've been using. Uh, in the future, I will show um, how we can do all kinds of interesting things about uh, collecting data, cleaning up that data, but that's gonna be a little bit down the road, okay? So the next couple things that we're gonna talk about in this series is uh, variation, missing data, and covariation. We're going to, and uh, patterns and modeling as well. Okay, but we're gonna spend uh, quite a bit of time on this variation and covariation. So if you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.